take it away. All right. So um, <clears throat> this is the descriptive camera. Um, it works a lot like a regular camera, it's, except instead of outputting images, it outputs a text description of the scene. Um, I'll try it out right now because it can take a little time for the picture to develop. So I'll just take a picture of all you guys. Smile. Here we go. One, two, three. All right. It'll take a little while for that to develop. Um, so uh, the, um, there are three motivations behind why I made this. Uh, first was for this class I really wanted to make a camera. Um, I love cameras and I would, thought maybe it would be really neat if I made a camera that had some novel concept to it, something no one has ever heard of or seen before. Um, the second is I was playing around with the BeagleBone platform, it's an embedded Linux platform and it's a little new and it's a little raw and I thought there's a lot of potential to the technology and I wanted to make something that really showcased what it could do and uh, I thought that this could also become maybe like a, like a seminal project for the platform that could really get things started and, and, and become sort of a reference thing. There we go. Hmm. Um, so let's see what it says. Uh, a room full of people, some waving, Asian man on right of room giving peace sign. <laughs> 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 there you go. So I'll, pa the print, uh, I'll pass the print around um, from the camera. Um, the third reason why I made it was because I was thinking a lot about how uh, about metadata with pictures. When you take a picture, you get the uh, camera settings, the camera make, the model, the time of day, sometimes uh, geolocation, um, longitude and latitude, but no metadata about the content of the image. And while there, I, a lot of my research <coughs> pointed me to uh, computer science students who are working on processing images and get descript getting descriptions out, out of them, we're so far away from that being a practical technology right now. So this camera explores the idea of what if. What if, what if we could capture images and describe them? Um, and the, uh, the, the thing I did though was I decided in the course of thinking about that and making it, I decided to make the camera only output the description to sort of say, to get people talking and thinking, what would you do if you had this information? What, like, how would that make it easier for you and your wife and your photo libraries, for instance? Um, is, would it be a benefit to you know, hair, uh, sight impaired people or something like that? Um, so uh, yeah, that, that's the project. Um, it's, as I said before, it has a beagle bone in there and um, it passes off the information, it takes a picture, it saves it as a JPEG, it puts it out on a public server and it passes that off to an individual who is actually looking for photos to transcribe and uh, when uh, the description is ready, uh, the camera just prints it out right away. Um, I was originally using Mechanical Turk to do it um, and it got expensive because in order to get a description back within demo time, uh, it would cost like $1.50 per picture. Um, so. I made a second mode I called accomplice mode, which I put a call out on the list for. Thank you to anybody who responded to that. And now the camera actually IMs my accomplices and says, hey, there's a picture ready to be described. Go jump on it. And so um, uh, Natalie is actually, uh, I think she's on the floor. She's working on her thesis right now. And um, she's so excited and pumped to be describing pictures. So um, that accomplice mode works. And accomplice mode, I can set up one person to be the accomplice and just be ready. Or I could have it really like blast my whole buddy list. But I figured uh, I didn't want to like, you know, piss anyone off right now. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that's the project. I think it's 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 wonderful because like for for, for a company like CNN, uh, when they archive the video, so the video just it's a basic shop list like you know that. Mm -hmm. Then the they before it actually goes into deep deep archive, they had they actually had to build the system of humans over in Atlanta that will actually describe each and every archive video they want. So if they wanted. Obama in like wearing a red tie or a blue right. tie or whatever Obama with Michelle in a pink dress. They will have that video by just typing in search pattern. The search pattern is still text. Mm -hmm. So I think it's absolutely, you know, there's a future for it. Sure. I have to do that on the internet creation. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not fun. No, it's not fun. <laughs> this is much nicer than that. Um, I really love how, with the design, how open you kept it and how you can see inside. Okay. I think that makes it feel really special for some reason. Like, mm -hmm. it's very, tra it's 
obviously transparent. <laughs> but it, I mean, it, it almost, I don't know. I feel like it kind of, not too missed, but I don't know what I'm trying to say. But I like that it's transparent. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, I was, wasn't was sure about it uh, at first, uh, but in a sense, it, the, the project is transparent in that the source code will be yeah. all transparent, and then you can also see what's going on inside. I kind of like to see what's going on inside myself. And it's and good for the beagle bone that you can yeah. see it right there. Yeah, yeah, it's in there. It makes it more magical, too, because especially if you don't know that's a human being on the other side, and you see all these wires and stuff mm -hmm. in there, you think some, something crazy is going on in there. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. In, uh, in the radio in Italy, we talk about you already. Oh, really? <laughs> you are, are starting now. <laughs> you can come, take a picture of our economy, and say what is that? What is like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thanks. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's gotten a lot of attention, which was great. Uh, also made my last week kind of, the end of last week, really exhausting for me. <laughs> But all is in a good way, very good way. I'm curious about the beagle bone and what it is and how it works. Um, yeah, so it, it's uh, it's a board that has uh, basically it's a Linux computer on a board. It's eighty nine dollars. Um, it has a micro SD slot, so you put your Linux distribution image on there, and um, it has all the pins that an Arduino would have: serial, analog, in and out, um, digital read, digital write. It's a little the community support isn't right isn't quite there yet, um, but I'm working towards helping that out and helping people out and putting out my own documentation about what I figure out with it. Um, but I think I, I really think that like we're moving towards stuff like this because like I was starting to feel a little limited by what I was doing with the Arduino, where I had like an Arduino with like three shields stacked on top and trying to get them to work was just a huge pain especially when you bring something online. and It has the benefit of the, f the fact that it's running Linux. You've got all that Linux support out there. Anything you can do with Linux, pretty much you can do on the board. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I'm running Python on here. The, the camera is run by Python, but you could compile a C program. It could be Ruby, whatever you're comfortable with, really. This could run its own web server, but the network topology here at NYU doesn't really let me use that to my advantage here. But I, in that way, it could also be totally self-contained and not have to depend on a public server to send something out. Is it running wireless right now? No, it's on the Ethernet right now. Um, I, uh, my dream is to make it battery operated and give it like GSM because I feel like it's not really a camera unless you can really walk around with it and shoot pictures with it. So I would love one day to be able to go out to the park and shoot with it and see what kind of results I get. And how difficult it was to put the beagle bone on a network, um, not not the MYU. Network. A friendly network, it's very easy to do um, because uh, it, it by default it uses DHCP, so it checks for to ask. So for, it has it has an Ethernet port. Yep, yeah, yeah. The Ethernet port's built in. You plug it in, you turn it on. In fact, that's the way you program it is through the Ethernet port is by getting on the network and you log into the beagle bone and you program it right on the beagle bone. As a matter of fact. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just, using it at NYU it becomes difficult because you have to get an IP and then figuring out how to do the static IP. We were working on it for a while and it took a while to get that right, um, but, um, yeah, it, it's pretty much a network dependent thing. So in terms of cameras, uh, you know, he can, he has his pick of, of, you know, any camera that has a Linux driver. Right, yeah. So he can use any web, you know, uh, webcam or anything. He, you know, he's leveraging the big world of computers with his his little microcontroller. Yeah, and, and then all the all, all the the you know you can have all the LEDs and servos and whatever you need to do whatever you want. Um, so yeah, but so it's reading. It's using just like I wrote digital read function. So there's. You know, in Arduino, there's digital read, digital write, and analog read, analog write. That doesn't really exist yet in this, so I had to write those functions myself. But the um, I, once I got that down, it made it really easy to like write the LED code and the button code and have the. But printer. you having written those means that we don't have to write those. We can just go. Yeah, that's all on GitHub. That library is on GitHub for Python, at least. Um, because when it comes to using GPIO on the Linux, it's a matter of writing files to different locations. Rather than saying, you know, digital write, you say write high to this specific file for this specific pin. Um, 
but in, so any language can really do that operation, but you have to open, in, in any language, you have to open the file, you have to do error handling if the file doesn't open or if it can't find the file, write the file, close the file, you know, there's all that stuff that so you're kind of hiding all that. Yeah, that happens all in the background. That was written sort of in a way that was very general and people are actually using my code now for their own projects. I'm getting a lot of support requests. So. <laughs> all right, very good.